Uh, we turn our attention to Cleveland. I can't wait to uh, get a chance to talk to Mary Kay Cabot. She covers the uh, Cleveland Browns for, for Cleveland.com and the Plain Dealer. Mary Kay, I was talking about this earlier. Last year, this was the camp that everyone was talking about. So much news, so much buzz. It was a lot of the Deshaun Watson news. Will he play? Will he won't play? What's the contentions of a suspension? And then all of a sudden, we fast forward to 2023. This has probably been probably one of the quieter camps nationally. What do you say locally? What has been the vibe of this year's camp so far? Well, one of the reasons why it might be a little quiet is because we are all sequestered down here in West Virginia <laughs> at the Greenbrier Resort. Yeah. There are no uh, there are no fans here, so it's just the media, you know, that came and traveled down here with the team. Uh, so you don't have you know all the nationals here like we did last year. You know, there's not a huge media contingent, so that might be one of the reasons. But I but as you mentioned, one of the other big reasons is the fact that uh, you know the whole Deshaun Watson controversy has settled down so much this year. No one's waiting uh, to find out how many games he's going to be out. I mean, there's just uh, a whole different vibe. It's all about football now in regards to Deshaun Watson. And he did stand up in front of his teammates, gave his life story the other night, and, you know, really talked to them just about, uh, you know, what shaped him as a young man growing up and uh, how he got to the point that he is today shared some things about what he, um, you know, what he has gone through and experienced and, uh, you know, the, you know, the whole off the field uh, situation that he has. He talked about that. Apparently not, you know, he touched on it. I don't know that he really completely delved into it, but that was part of the narrative and part of his story, of course. And uh, but other than that, it's been all about football for him here. Yeah, I know all about football for him, but what about his teammates now? You you mentioned he's having conversations with them, but how relieved are they now that they can talk football and not about a team that will have Deshaun or without have Deshaun? It seems like everybody seems to be more relieved that they can focus on the game rather than Deshaun Watson. Well, yes, absolutely. They all know who their quarterback is going to be for the whole year. They're not trying to divide reps in half. They're not trying to divide, uh, you know, their chemistry in half. Uh, so they're, you know, they're they're getting to know him. He's getting to know them. He's developing a really nice on the field chemistry with Elijah Moore, who looks really, really good so mm-hmm. far in this camp. Pads are coming on for the first time tomorrow, but uh, Elijah is definitely somebody to watch. I did a story on him last night where I, you know, I got a chance to ask him, you know, did you really, you know, tell Mike LaFleur to, you know, go F himself like it had been reported? <laughs> because, you know, his whole life basically kind of, and career sort of changed after that. And so I got a chance to explore that with him a little bit. And that was cool. And then um, I talked to Zadarius Smith today just about, uh, you know, how the Browns have to establish a mentality and make sure that teams know they're a force to be reckoned with. So, yeah, there, there's some, some cool stuff coming out of here. Yeah, I, I can tell there, there's some cool stuff because you mentioned Elijah Moore, Amari Cooper, obviously. We know about Deshaun Watson and one full year for him. But I think that there is this sense that, we're, and we're going to talk a little bit too, about the AFC North. And we know about Burrow. We know about Lamar Jackson, right? Kenny Pickett is still up and coming. But right now, if people were looking, they feel like the Deshaun Watson of this year will be a lot better of what he was next year. But what does that put the expectations for this football team? Do they believe that they are a team that can win the division and make the playoffs right now? Well, they certainly do. I mean, they they really aren't getting that kind of love from – uh, you know, from Vegas or the the odds makers or or really the you know the national pundits, but they certainly feel here that this is a football team that can win the AFC North, go to the playoffs, and challenge for the Super Bowl. That's the vibe. That's what they intend to do. Uh, that's what this is all about. And uh, you know, the energy here is really really good. And when you have a quarterback like Deshaun Watson, if you can get him back to where he was in 2020, then you really do have a legitimate shot at that. And I think it really hinges on that. If, if he can be that player that everybody remembers from his Houston days and his three Pro Bowl days and his leading the NFL with 4,823 yards in 2020 days, then, you know, then they could be on to something. But uh, it really hinges upon that in large part. And then defensively, you know, you've got a new coordinator in Jim Schwartz. You've got, you've got Miles Garrett, Darius Smith. You've got a lot of good guys over there. 
if it all comes together the way that it should, they have as good a chance of, of anybody in the division. She's Mary Kay Cabot, Cleveland.com and the Cleveland Plain Dealer. You can follow her on Twitter at Mary Kay Cabot. Expectations. Expectations for this football team that now has Deshaun Watson for a full year. But how do we view or look at the head coach, Kevin Stefanski? I know there's a lot of rumors and reports out there that his seat could be getting warm and warmer as the season goes along if the Cleveland Browns aren't playing to what some may say a playoff type level. Well, you know, it, it's difficult to say. I mean, right. the owner of the football team stopped very short of putting any kind of an ultimatum on Kevin Stefanski. He's not drawing the line in, in the sand and saying, if such and such doesn't happen, these guys are gone. There isn't anything like that right now. So I think, you know, for the most part, no one's trying to speak anything like that into existence. There is a, a strong vibe that he is the right man for the job and that, you know, it's a lot easier to coach well when you have an elite quarterback like Deshaun Watson. So if he can get Deshaun Watson playing like the Deshaun Watson of old, then his job will be uh, perfectly safe because they'll be winning a lot of football games. So that's the key. They've got to go out there and, they win, and they've got to win games. They cannot have a third losing season. The bar is set at the playoffs for sure. Uh, there, there's no question about that. That's Everyone knows that you, know, you don't go out and spend three first-round picks and $230 million guaranteed on your quarterback and not expect to make the playoffs. So they do expect to make the playoffs. They have the Super Bowl as their goal. And, uh, and you know, I don't know if Kevin's job depends on making the playoffs or not. I think we have to see how it all plays out. You mentioned a name a little bit earlier, Zadarius Smith, on that defense. I thought that was a defense last year in Cleveland that people didn't really talk enough about in terms of they really let the team down a little bit. There were a lot of games where they were in, even when Jacoby Brissett was at quarterback, and the defense didn't hold up their end of the bargain. They're much improved with some of those additions, whether it's guys coming back from injury or even the addition of Zadarius Smith. What do you see so far from this Cleveland Browns defense? Well, you know, just with Jim Schwartz alone, yeah. you can see that they're going to be much more aggressive up front. It will be a much more attack-minded defense. I already also see the defensive back playing much more aggressively, really going after the ball, uh, attacking it. So it's just that's sort of the buzzword. They're just attacking from all over the place. And, again, I just talked to Zadarius Smith, and, and he talked about how they do have to establish that you know, that tough-minded mentality. When you think of AFC North defenses, he played for the Ravens uh, back when they had, you know, Terrell Suggs and, and those guys. And he knows what it's like to play tough, hard-nosed AFC North football. We know what the Pittsburgh Steelers defense is always like. So that's what the Browns are aiming for, to play the kind of Cleveland Browns defense that their fans can be proud of, uh, that the AFC North has to fear. Is there an underrated player that we're not talking enough about? Because I'm looking around at the roster right now, Mary Kay, and I'm seeing a Cedric Tillman from Tennessee, a young wide receiver who they took. Uh, you've Donovan Peoples-Jones, where does he fit at now in this offense? Obviously, Amari Cooper is number one. Is Elijah Moore number two? How, how does this wide receiver room start to pan out a little bit? Well, right now, Amari Cooper is out with a little bit of a, some kind of an injury. It shouldn't right. be something that bothers him long term they're calling it a minor tweak but he, he's really not practicing right. right now so it's giving giving some of the younger guys an opportunity to shine elijah moore is really standing out so you got to watch out for elijah moore when you look back to his rookie year with the jets he had this one stretch where he had five touchdown catches in six games right. and then he he hurt a quad muscle i think it was and he missed the last five games but he was on a tear he was on a tear before that and then last year just kind of got weird and uh you know <laughs> i think he is aiming to get back to that pace that he was on. So he's definitely one to watch. Uh, as you mentioned, Donovan Peoples-Jones, uh, he's, he's always a good, solid play, player for the, the Cleveland Browns. And um, now they've got Jordan Aikens. He's a tight end that, uh, that they got from the Texans. And I think he's somebody that's going to make an impact. He's played with Deshaun Watson before. So offensively, you know, those are, are some of the guys that, um, you know, that are making an impact. They wanted Marquise to come in and be their vertical Marquise Goodwin to, to come in and be their vertical stretch guy. He's sidelined with blood clots. Everyone just is only, of course, concerned with his health and his safety at this point. Uh, but that was a little bit of a setback. And then um, another speedster, Anthony Schwartz, third rounder. He, um, you know, he got back on the field today. He can prove now 
uh, he needs to go out there and prove that he deserves a spot on this roster, and there's an opening for a speed guy like that now. Just a couple more minutes here with Mary Kay Cabot, Cleveland.com, and the Cleveland Plain Dealer. Follow her on Twitter at Mary Kay Cabot. You know, next week, uh, the Browns will be playing in the Hall of Fame game, but that also means that they'll have a player who will be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I know you had a chance to cover Joe Thomas. Uh, just your thoughts on Joe Thomas entering the Pro Football Hall of Fame, the first ballot Hall of Famer. We knew that that was going to happen, but uh, your interactions with him and just – what do you think he represents for the Cleveland Browns? Well, he, you know, he just embodies the whole spirit of the Cleveland Browns. He's the, he was the face and the voice of the Cleveland Browns for so many years when there was upheaval and just turnover with quarterbacks and coaches and GMs. And Joe was a rock of stability. He was just somebody you could always go to for that great quote to put everything in perspective. Uh, he was wonderful with the media. He was amazing on the football field. The first time I ever talked to him uh, in rookie minicamp, I asked him his goals. He said, I plan on making the Hall of Fame. And look, then I got to sit in the room as a Hall of Fame selector and help vote him into the Hall of Fame. So it was just, uh, I was honored to be able to do that, you know, to speak up for Joe a little bit on his behalf also in the room and, you know, help help him get in there. Not that he needed my help, but it was just great to, uh, you know, to be able to be part of that vote and see that through from what he said uh, at that rookie mini camp. And I'll tell you, I mean, he just set the tone for so many guys on this team, like Joel Batonio, who sort of has taken the baton from Joe and uh, and he's been playing at a all pro clip for you know for several years now, and uh, just kind of is also now that you know that great locker room guy that helps everybody and is great in the community. And you just can't say enough good things about Joe Thomas. You know, Mary Kay, I uh, everyone sees the game differently. Like you may look at it something differently. I may see something differently. But you've been covering Cleveland Browns for a long time. You've been covering the NFL for a long time. As you, as you've already started this training camp upcoming, for you, what's the blank canvas that you start with, that you look at first, that you kind of just examine or you tend to look at, or you see there may be something in which uh, you want to write more on this or you see that? How do you, as a reporter and someone who covers the team, how do you start training camp? Well, you know, everything's new this year, right. and that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see – you know, how is it all coming together? They have a completely uh, new offense, basically. I mean, Deshaun Watson is the starter full-time for the very first time for the Cleveland Browns. It's the beginning of the Deshaun Watson era, really. I mean, mm -hmm. it starts now. Last year, that wasn't it. He only played the final six games. So, for me, that's the blank canvas. Who is Deshaun Watson? Mm -hmm. What is he all about? Is he going to live up to everything the Haslam felt that he would when they went out and took this enormous risk and put their fan base through uh, having to accept a player with, you know, so many things in his past that people were uncomfortable about. Uh, you know, how is this all going to look? How is it going to come together? And if it does come together the way that everyone hopes, then this could be the start of something big. I mean, you have to have a quarterback that can go head-to-head -head in the AFC with Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen and Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson and Aaron Rodgers, and, and now they feel they have that guy. And they really haven't had that guy uh, since <laughs> I, you know, since this team came back in 1999. Right. They have not had an elite, uh, you, know, pro, you know, Pro Bowl quarterback like this uh, who you can say, you know what, he can go into a game against Patrick Mahomes and have a chance to really beat him. So, uh, for me, that's what this is all about. Uh, just f uh, before I get you out of here, Mary Kay, is this just a one-off, the Browns going up to the Greenbrier in West Virginia, or is this – because usually I know training camp's always over in Bray, Ohio, at the Cleveland Browns Training Center. Is this just like a one-off, or they want to do something different this year? Well, they wanted to do something different because they have the Hall of Fame game. So they started camp a week earlier than everybody else. And in order to get guys kind of excited to come back – and break it up a little bit and not be in Berea from July 21st all the way to they, what, that, what they hope is February, um, you know, they, they wanted to change it up a little bit. So they're down here. It's beautiful. So far, so good with everyone. Uh, it, it seems like it's going really, really well. Uh, and they will be back in Berea. So fans will be able to come out and see them for eight practices in Berea. Uh, we all leave here on Sunday uh, after nine days of being down here and eight practices. Uh, and you know what? They'll see how it goes. If it, if it seems like it was beneficial in terms of camaraderie and all those things, uh, then they could possibly do it again. 
Well, we are one week away from the Hall of Fame game between the Jets and the Browns. I know you'll be covering it. You'll be all over it, Mary Kay. I appreciate the time as always. Thanks for having me. <laughs> That's Mary Kay Cabot, Cleveland.com and The Plain Dealer. Follow her on Twitter at Mary Kay Cabot. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 